I'm Catherine Richard with Minnesota Public Radio News, and I'm here live at the History Center of Olmstead County in Rochester, Minnesota, to hear the winner of the first annual Creepy Dolls Contest. I know all of you have been following this contest online for the last week or so. Uh, with me, I have Wayne Ganaway. He's the executive director of the History Center. I have Dan Nowakowski, who's the curator here at the History Center. And I also have Christine Rule, who is a board member for the History Center. So Christine, I hear this was your idea. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you came up with it? Well, I, I first thought of doing the dolls when I was, we were cleaning out some closets up at the Mayowood Mansion, and three, three of these dolls we found up there at the mansion. Um, and then when we were looking for posts for this Halloween season, uh, I really wanted to feature something from the collection. There's a lot of our pieces that never get seen, or very, very rarely. And uh, the dolls came to mind for Halloween, and I thought creepy dolls would be a flashy title, so that's what I went with, and we had no idea it would become what it did. Right, so you've been hearing from people all over the world, it sounds like. Tell us a little bit more about the response you've been getting to the contest, and a lot of media has been interested in this, too. Yes, uh, I think it was almost that the media nabbed it first. We had a few shares the first few days, and then um, the second week, starting on Monday, it really took off in the media. It went uh, around the country and then around the world, and we've been getting comments on our Instagram page from Russia, uh, places in Asia, lots of comments from Canada and uh, Arizona, North Carolina, everywhere. Um, there's been a lot of interest in other museums too, of course, and it's been nice to have their support. Yeah, and I noticed too um, online some of the other history centers and historical sites in Minnesota decided to join the fun. I think um, the Glen Sheen Mansion up in Duluth yeah. had their own creepy doll, although I think these are creepier personally. But <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciated their help a lot. They they put a lot of. Um, Instagram stories out, and I had never done that before. So thank you, Glen Sheen, for your uh, my ability to copy what you do. Right. <laughs> so uh, I know everyone's really interested in hearing who the winner is, but before we do that, I just want everyone to know that you will be able to see all of these dolls on display at the History Center starting today through December 1st. So come on down. All right, Wayne, let's hear who won third place. All right. This is this is very exciting. <laughs> Well, let's see. <clears throat> okay, so third place goes to number two, the hot pink creepy doll. Yay. Yay. <laughs> this is who I voted for. Okay, Dan, so tell us a little bit more about hot pink creepy doll here. So she is a made with biscuit plaster is what they call it. That's the face. Um, it looks like it was probably a mix of mohair or human hair, but unfortunately most of that hair fell off over time because what they would do is weave that hair together and then glue it on. And you can see on this doll, unfortunately, she lost a lot of it over the time um, and everything. But then if you look at her dress, it's probably a handmade dress. It has started to fray, but that is proper lace on it. And they actually styled stylized the dress with every function so she has bloomers on underneath so this is actually l what they would wear back when this doll was made because when they did the dolls they made them very human like and lifelike especially with uh female clothing yeah and i and the thing that i found creepiest about this is that when her when she's lying back her eyes look like they've been erased off or something yeah, like she that she is one of the dolls that does have the closing eyes and she, her eyes are actually brown instead of blue like some other ones we've had in the contest yeah. so that's kind of interesting because you don't always see the mixture of different color eyes they're usually some solid color and then this one has the brown ones which is kind of unique for it yeah and one thing I enjoyed about this contest too is that you really learn a lot about the history of dolls and doll making over the the last few centuries too all right Wayne so on to number two who won okay we're getting closer all right second place goes to number four green wax doll with moving eyes <laughs> the infamous moving eyes <laughs> All right, Dan, tell us more about this one. So this doll is made with a wax face. Um, it's, she's starting to crack in her face, but unfortunately uh, that's just due to time. And it's a wax, and wax isn't a, doesn't hold up well in time. But she has the blue eyes, which is really cool because the blue eyes are very lifelike. And when you first look at them and not expect her eyes to move, it freaks you out. <laughs> 
And what's really interesting with her is the mechanics are still pretty solid. They are starting to deteriorate now, but um, during certain time periods, you can actually hear the click of the mechanics inside her head. So you know how it, you can hear that working, which is still really cool because this doll is over 100 years old and you can still hear those mechanics working. Yeah, and what you think is cool is creepy yeah. at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> and again, she is dressed just like the pink doll, probably handmade dress, uh, features the bloomers as well. She has lace around her collar as well, along with her sleeves. And what's really unique on this one, it's leather hands, and they have all five fingers showing, which is really cool because those hands are still in pristine shape compared to other ones we've had. Yeah. All right. Now, without further ado, Wayne, who is going to be crowned the creepiest doll in Olmstead County for 2019? Okay. But first, the, the whole thing of the mechanics in her head. Wow, I like that line. That's great. <laughs> All right. But enough of that. First place winner. Drum roll, please. Okay. It is number nine cloth doll with painted face or not so painted <laughs> face anymore <laughs> oh look at that crown <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right dan so tell us what's unique about this doll so this doll we are fairly confident that this is a handmade doll probably from the mother to the daughter when it was first made um it was probably very gorgeous the mother hand painted the face Unfortunately, because it's handmade and it's made from cloth, she can't put the details of the eyes being pushed in or the nose sticking out. But you can still make out her eyes, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, her smile has gone and her rosy cheeks. Because I did notice there is some red on her che cheeks still, so they would have been rosy. Um, but it's very unique because it's a mother showing that she's making a toy for her daughter, who probably cherished this toy and loved it for a long time. And she must have played with it very hard because, fortunately, she's missing an arm. And the paint starting to, is deteriorating. But it just has that story of the mother making a toy for her daughter. And it's really unique in that aspect of it. Yeah. And it's stylized kind of like a China head doll, which we have one in the contest because she's got the black hair, the rosy cheeks, the smile. Unfortunately, it was made with cloth over China. Yeah, and so everyone can get a better shot of this one here. Dan, you told me um, before we started today that this one has actually become your favorite of yes. the contestants. Tell me more. This has become my favorite now because it really does look like a mummy, and I do love Egyptian history, so it reminds me of that. But just really looking closely looking at her face, you can see the mother actually did put a look, quite a bit of detail in it. Unfortunately, a lot of that's gone. But if you look close and hard enough, you can make out the rosy cheeks, like I said before. And the eyes were just straight black. Unfortunately, she couldn't do the pupils well, but she must have had a nice smile at some point too. And it's just, it's a very fascinating story because it shows the mother's love she put into make this toy, which was probably not an easy task for her to do. Yeah, I can imagine. Yep. All right, so Wayne, you told me you have a favorite too. Why don't you come over and tell us about the one you like the most? Yeah, sure. The one I prefer, I think is the scariest, is this guy here. Why don't you stand behind this doll? Yeah, there okay. we go. That's better. Is this guy here? Uh, it's because he's got these spindly spider-like legs, and I can just picture him like like creeping up the staircase, you know, like looking for like a room to go into. So I'm going to have nightmares about that tonight. Yeah, and Dan, is there anything you can tell us about this one that's interesting? So uh, this is actually a jester doll, um, probably used for a fig uh, display on something. But it is a jester, and he's twisted because probably humidity got to him and kind of ruined his leather and his cloth make. So that's why it's all bendy and twisty. Unfortunately, due to that humidity, we're not able to put it back to its original form. But it's really cool. And this one was actually found up at Maywood, which was really cool. Because it was one of the dolls Christine first saw. And she's like, oh, let's use that one yeah. for her idea on creepy dolls. And for those of you who don't know, Mayowood is the ancestral home of the, the Mayo brothers yes. here in Rochester. It was, uh, Dr. Charlie's house that he built out in the country because him and his brother will lived in town but eventually dr charlie was like okay i'm sick of living in town let's move out to the country so he designed the house they built it out there he actually ran it as a farm for a number of years then his son dr chuck uh, moved into this house with 
Alice, and Alice reformatted the house to her style. Then when they passed away, uh, doc, young Dr. Charlie moved into the house for a number a period of time and then eventually donated the house to the History Center. And we still own the collection, but we then in kind or gave the house over to Mayo Clinic to keep for upkeep. Yeah. All right, Christine, the, the brainchild behind all of this. Why don't you come over and tell us about your most favorite? And actually, I'm going to have you stand behind so everyone can see. All right. Um, we're all down on this end, but it's not my favorite. It's my least favorite. <laughs> uh, this is the one I would find the most frightening, I guess. Um, and the reason is I can see all of these dolls and imagine what they would have looked like in the past um, and how they obviously were played with and, and loved. This one... I cannot imagine a reason why anybody would ever have bought it. <laughs> it just, I think, probably looked bad from the beginning. So this one is my least favorite. You probably wouldn't want to wake up every morning no, as a little girl and look at that. <laughs> Dan, uh, tell us a little bit more about this. Uh, so this is actually classified as a figurine in our collection. It's made from plaster. Um, unfortunately, his hair broke off at the top. This was also found at the Mayo Wood Mansion. Um, Unfortunately, we don't know if it was a gift given to the Mayo by a patient or if it's a souvenir one of the kids wanted when they were visiting uh, in Europe or down in Mexico. But uh, like Christine sa said, um, it's pretty creepy. It's not my top favorite, but if you look closely at the eyes, I mean, if you just focus on them, it looks like he's moving and plotting something. Yeah. <laughs> Well, as I said earlier, uh, you can see all of these dolls and more from the History Center of Olmsted County's collection on display here in Rochester starting this week through December 1st, if you dare. You don't want to make these dolls angry. You better, you better show up in person to give them their credit. So thank you so much today for having thank us. You. And thank congratulations you. to the winner. <laughs> just in our dolls and our museum. Yeah. Thank you.